Hola a todos, iniciamos un nuevo panel en FutureCom 2015 sobre el tema de Carrier Wi-Fi y por qué los operadores deberían eh, tenerlo en su agenda, casi todos lo tienen, pero por qué deberían empezar a implementarlo y saber cómo implementarlo para poder asegurar que el usuario tiene una calidad de la experiencia similar o parecida o incluso idéntica a la que tiene con las redes macro. Gentlemen, welcome for Welcome to this panel and thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you for having us. So as I was saying to the audience, we are discussing carrier Wi-Fi. You know that because you were invited specifically. Uh, so the idea is, first question, uh, why do operators need to care about carrier Wi-Fi? Well, you know, um, I, I think it's different from different types of operators. If we take the cable operators, uh, they used to be the kings of content and having high high capacity networks to deliver that contact TV and whatnot. Then the OTT players came, being able to deliver the same over any network. Mm -hmm. And then it was added by the 4G networks. So all of a sudden, they were squeezed from two, two sides. So really, a cable operator needs to go Wi-Fi to really uh, provide that mobile experience for, or nomadic experience rather for their users. Okay. In the, in the mobile operator side, it's, it's a matter of staying relevant. I mean, already today it's like 70% or so of the traffic on the mobile device going through the Wi-Fi networks anyways. In a few years, that can be 80, 85%. And then you meet, must ask yourself as a mobile operator, am I going from being a mobile broadband provider to being something that people use in between hotspots. Mm -hmm. So okay. that is the main driver and also the other devices that needs to be hooked up that has no SIM card. That's the main, main drivers for mobile operators. What do you think, Raul? I think uh, the main challenge is that uh, operators nowadays are driven by the user requests and demands for uh, increasing quality and uh, lower prices that reflect the lower margins for, for the operators. So they have to use a complete arsenal of uh, tools and they have to plan the networks using all the opportunities they have. And for some markets, uh, Wi-Fi is uh, preferred. Uh, for some uh, different strategies, uh, we have the full challenge of 5G coming uh, that will influence that debate. Mm -hmm. uh, but generally, I think it's a uh, user agenda that is commanding new strategies and creativity by the carriers. Okay. Let me, let me bring some studies that I read, not, not recently, but perhaps last year or at the beginning of this year. The study said in the past that the user, when they had the option between 3G and Wi-Fi, would definitely go to, go to Wi-Fi. But then some Korean operators and, and in Japan said, once we launched LTE and LTE Advanced, then the user, it seems that it prefers to go from Wi-Fi to LTE Advanced. To your point at the beginning. Does that mean that, and, and I, I agree with you that all the studies suggest that most of the traffic is, is gonna go to Wi-Fi. But we hear this story now, or, or this study saying, you know, now the user, when it's confronted between LTE Advanced and Wi-Fi, it seems it prefers LTE Advanced. I, I don't know exactly why, but that's what they say. Would that change a little bit the scenario for the operator or the still Wi-Fi needs to be you part know, of the headnet? First of all, I, I, I have not seen that study myself, so okay. I cannot comment on I'll, that. I'll send I, you the I'm, I'm kind of surprised. Trust me. Uh, I, I mean, trust it's, it's not you. my I study, but, but... I trust you, I trust you, of course. Yeah. But if, you, if we look at Japan in particular, they have a lot of Wi-Fi, mm -hmm. um, and users are using that in massive. I have heard operators saying that now we need to offload the Wi-Fi network. Okay. <laughs> so that might be one reason. Uh, but I think we cannot forget that the power in whether we like it or not in this industry is changing. I mean, it's more and more power to the uh, handset manufacturers. That's I'm a key component. talking about yeah. Apple, for instance. Yeah. And as you know, they are all for Wi-Fi. So that alone tells me that an operator to stay competitive needs to have Wi-Fi, needs to embrace it, and above all, needs to cater for all kind of devices that the younger generation have. I mean, sure. myself, 50 years old, I have three devices on me most of the time. Uh, younger people might, might have even more. So that's the... Raul, what is your take on I, I agree entirely. Uh, 
You know, uh, the the whole agenda of using Wi-Fi is is so intertwined with other uh, agendas. Uh, like uh, you mentioned very correctly to the point, the question of LTE, LTE and LTE advanced. We have it in the IEEE. We have a full agenda of developing standards and implementation tools for LTE and LTE advanced. And this definitely impacts the whole strategy because you see, in, in the past, operators would be reluctant to include Wi-Fi service in their in their strategies because they would face problems of uh, continuity of service quality. But uh, now we have the case that this is no longer true. Okay. We 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 definitely have tools that would allow a uh, great satisfactory grade of service using uh, Wi-Fi Wi-Fi so it's it's a tool at their disposition and they are uh, I think uh, whenever you go they are willing to uh, using the and and the key to this issue is that they're using it as part of their strategy it's not uh, you know, you don't have to abandon one yeah. thing to use the other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You use it as part of their strategy. Yeah, that's called a hand. Absolutely. Absolutely. But, but, but it's still, if you see the industry, it's interesting. I mean, I, I don't know what you take out of this. Obviously, different companies have different interest, interests, and different companies have different power in terms of how they can influence the market. But some companies, they are now trying to make on the Wi-Fi spectrum something called, and you probably know this, LTE, LTE Unlicensed or LAA. And even they are talking about doing LTE and license without the coordination with the macro network, meaning that the device would connect directly to a hotspot, which is LTEU, but doesn't have to have that anchor with the LTE network. There's a company here who proposes that it's actually very close, oh, okay. right? Um, uh, so the idea is why, is, and, and I've been to several conferences where operators would say, if I could use LTEU, I would prefer to use LTEU than Wi-Fi. The problem is that Wi-Fi is already there and LTEU is not there, so I need to change all the routers in the home and in the hotspot and so on. But still operators are looking for, if they could, just one technology. So it seems they keep pushing for something that is consistent with their macro network. Well, Don't you find that a bit odd? You know, odd? It, it's, it's all that discussion, it's a big debate, right? And, and um, as long as LTA, LAA, which is more friendly to the, to the spectrum to the y, uh, to, to that they are working in, yeah. at, at, at least if they have that respect as Wi-Fi have we towards each other, that's fine. Why, why, why should we compete? I mean, uh, why should we struggle? It's room for everyone. Really? But the, the, yeah, I think so. But okay. the main point here is, the ones that go in with LLA, they have a solution for uh, the, the SIM devices, the mobile phones. Okay. What about all the other devices? Okay. So Wi-Fi will not go away just because this comes by. And then we have Wi-Fi calling. That is a very interesting alternative to that because the driver here is really to get indoor coverage, right? Mm -hmm. and, and to maximize the spectrum that is available. So. Whether that goes through LTE or, or Wi-Fi, it doesn't really matter in a way, but, but I think they need to cater for all kind of devices. That's why Wi-Fi will be, be staying there forever and ever. You being at the standards and you probably you know about LTE. No, no, I, I agree. Uh, th these are complementary strategies. Mm -hmm. They have to be coordinated and uh, as... as uh, they have to be coordinated, but, but he was mentioning something interesting, is that you have the power of, of different cams supporting Wi-Fi? Uh, that's right, uh, I, I was going into that. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you have to have the ability to connect a multitude of devices simultaneously in different applications. We have the whole IoT context coming along, mm. yeah. which will demand uh, tools for connecting really much more devices than we presently see. And uh, the network must support all of this. So uh, again, it's coordinated and you have to choose the best alternative knowing beforehand that uh, no one per se will uh, answer to all the challenges that the operator will face in the near future. Okay, is the technology Wi-Fi as a carrier grade solution, it's ready to be implemented? I mean, obviously you know this better than anyone, and I know you're going to say yes, but I want you to say <laughs> it so we can record it on camera. 
uh, is completely ready uh, to be integrated seamlessly with the macro network in a way that the user at some point, perhaps this year or next year, or right now already, transparent, is com doesn't even know what's yeah. going on. Yeah. So at some point, even we, we might be losing those icons on the phone and you don't care which one it is because you could remove it. You know, you know, we, um, on, the, on the sort of signaling layer, uh, that has been a fact for many years. I mean, that's what all we have been doing since we started in 2001 even. So, okay. uh, and especially with the then... With UMA <laughs> and all these things? Uh, not UMA, okay. we have not been involved with that. But I mean, uh, we, we did our, our first SIM authentication customer okay. in 2010, I believe. And then it's totally integrated in the way that they just fly onto the network without knowing. But what we see here and that that has some promises. I think it's called LTLWA, yeah. where they actually aggregate it into one kind of stream. Yeah. And, and that is, of course, what you are looking at. And, and that is definitely a, a something that, that will make this even more integrated. But then again, we need to, to have some perspective on this. Hotspot 2.0, for instance. Yeah. Everybody is talking about Hotspot 2.0, but how many live networks out there do you have? Uh, some of our competition call it uh, Hotspot 2.0 just because they do SIM authentication, and there are some firmware saying Hotspot 2.0 in the access point. Yeah. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's implemented anyway. Okay. So things will take time. It will take time, but we will get there for sure. What is your take, yeah, Roland? It's, it's, I agree. The uh, maturity. It's a process. You have to. Uh, go in that direction and, and, and standards will have to be built and have to mature in order to allow uh, this complete transparency that you're talking about. But we will come to that. And, uh, I, I don't have any doubt that we will have a network for which the user doesn't care what is the meaning, as, as we have in other, in other contexts nowadays. So uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a question of time and a question of maturity of standards and user user uh, tools and, and, and habits that uh, will drive that. Excellent. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for uh, thank you being very here much today for the and have a good show. Thank you. Thank you.